Welcome to Automotive Electronics. We got in front of us today a Kelsey Hayes ABS module. Where's the camera? There we go. And we're going to show you how to get these apart. Now, if you're taking these off the car, let's we'll start with that. All right. You got four bolts here. And you want to remove this off the top of the, uh, of the your pump. Don't take the whole pump off. Don't take the brake lines off. Um, you don't need to do any of that. If you take the brake lines loose, you're going to get air in the system and you're going to have to bleed the system. This becomes a much, much bigger job. So what you want to do is just take this module loose, which is the electronic component on top. All right. Um, let me cover up my patient name here. Underneath, you got these solenoids that... Uh, actuate your abs stuff you know like sense your braking and everything so um i got a plug here plug here and plug here um on this particular one some of them are a little different okay when you start taking these apart um some of them will have screws uh like in this location i think i got a couple up here a couple back here this one doesn't. Some of them don't have any. This one doesn't. All right. To get these apart, you just insert your razor blade in here. I use this little curved razor blade. Seems to work out the best. And you get to this corner here. And uh, when you get to that corner, you just do the best you can. Some of them as I'm going through this one, this one doesn't have any little pegs along the way. Um, some of them will have little pegs underneath there. You'll feel it hit those things. Just pull the razor blade out, go a little bit beyond the peg, and continue on. All right. Once you've worked around this, being very careful not to cut yourself. As you can see, uh, that doesn't always work out for me. I've got a nice little notch out of my finger there where the hell is it yeah that probably happened during one of these all right once you get to that point you need yourself a little tiny screwdriver get in there and rotate that up all right like you get on that edge and you can rotate that up to where you get a little gap in there then you want to get yourself a little bit bigger screwdriver. A little bit bigger screwdriver. And you want to you want to kind of be able to look down in there. And you'll be able to see the circuit board. You just want to barely get your screwdriver in there. Get a hold of that thing. Rotate around. Now you've got a nice little gap going on there. And I can actually hold it with my fingers at this point. And you just kind of pull off that top without pulling on that circuit board underneath. Yeah, you just pull off that top. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay. Here we go. Let's go to this camera on the other bench get situated here so we can show you what's going on so zoom action going here all right yeah my cameras are all jacked up up is down down is up right is left left or right anyway Get it in the right spot and I can find a pair of tweezers or something to point with and we'll show you what goes on with these. The soldering around these big points where those uh, solenoids attach typically crack. And uh, you got some points on here. Sometimes there's like four in a row over here. Sometimes they're staggered like this one. This one's got the four in a row on this side. Where are you? It's got the four in a row on this side, but on the other side, they're like staggered. You want to resolder 
all of those. Um, the header pins here where your connector connects in, you'll want to resolder all of those. And that is just about it. Maybe perhaps even these two right here in the middle. All right. Let's see if we can see under the microscope what the actual problem is. Get you a little focus here if we can zoom in on some of these and see. Uh, what we got here. Oh, seems a little distorted. Anyway, when I get all the way zoomed in like this, it's kind of hard to see these things sometimes. I'm getting some glitches in my video stream. All right, those, nothing egregious on those. Check the four in the middle here. And you see that one's got some cracking. If I can get my tweezers in here and figure out which one I'm on. Okay, see those cracks along there? That's, uh, as time goes on, those just get worse and worse. I've seen it to where the pins will just be flopping around. Let's see if I can grab a hold of that one and move it. Nah. This one's not really horrible, but I've seen it where the pin, you can grab a hold of it like that and you just move it all over in the hole. That's a bad thing. But it only takes a little bit of cracking to cause a bad connection, so. All right, I'm gonna look at those staggered pins now. I'll go over here and look at these on this edge. We're having a little bit of a focus issue here, but looks like we got some cracking on that one. Yeah. Uh, microscope's not up high enough. Let me just put this up just a touch higher. Oh, if I can get it to go. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but just in my focal length here. All right, now let's get back down on that. Now we'll probably have to come down. All right, so we can see we got some cracking going on on those as well. So, yeah, nothing horrible, but, but perhaps enough that he's having an issue. Let me check these header pins. Where are you? They don't look horrible either. I'll take these two in the middle here. Oh. I usually put my finger over these things and then I try to find my finger because it's bigger and fatter. Got a little bit of, a little some stress cracks going on there. So perhaps this was more of a uh, situation where he was having a, a bit of an intermittent issue instead of a total failure. Let's get zoomed out a little bit so y'all can see what the hell. All right. I'll try to stay in frame as I work here. This is something you don't have to solder underneath the microscope. You can probably do it with your eyeballs. But repair process is not real lengthy on this. It's just to go over these pins. Once your iron heats up. And normally a little delicate iron like this is uh, 
good most of the electronics i work on that's the, the my go-to but if you want a little more heat and get a little thicker chisel tip like this you can get a little more heat on it makes your work go a little quicker these thicker connections they sometimes require a little extra heat this one has a minimal amount of pins in this header I do make some Kelsey Hayes modules that uh, are more difficult to get into than this. They got a Corvette one that you got to drive a bolt through um, to separate the uh, housing. And um, if you get a Corvette or um, I can't remember saying the newer ones, the newer ones will have Kelsey Hayes modules in them, but they have a plastic top on the top. Those are very difficult to get apart. I don't have a known good repair for those. Like these are pretty standardized. We know what goes wrong. We reflow these and you're 99% good to go. It doesn't mean anything else can't be wrong with it. It just means this is 99 times out of 100. This is what we find we can repair and get these things back on up back up online. And I'm not holding out on you because that one percent that we don't get repaired, it uh, it's nothing that I know what the hell's wrong with them. If I did know what was wrong with them I'd tell you. Just like that, we've gone over all the connections. You just process for this. Pretty simple. That one's ugly. Let's see if we can do and make it a little prettier. Um, it's pretty simple. You touch it with your uh, soldering iron. You kind of wait a second, unless half a second, whatever it takes. You'll see the solder go molten. When you do, just add a little touch of this. I'm talking about maybe. Um, just maybe that much, not, not much of this stuff. You don't have to like make a big glob on the top of it. Okay. And if it's not flowing in there and it's sticking and your wire sticking and et cetera, you don't have enough heat on it or you need to use some flux. Flux, I use Amtec flux. Okay. Um, this is magic juice, man. It just, uh, so let's just use that on this area here. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see, but that's not the prettiest work. I'll show you how magical it all happens when you add a little flux to it. I mean, this is functional, but it wouldn't win any beauty contest. So you put a little flux in there, and that solder flows and works so much better. The only thing that's you know the negative to adding the flux is you got to clean it off of there later you don't want to leave it sitting there so i've already added solder to these so we're not gonna well, i'm gonna add a little bit more to that one that one looks a little thin okay you don't want that whole pin covered but you don't want you just want that connection made clean this stuff with a uh, bit of alcohol 99% alcohol does not hurt electronics unless you're talking about a stepper motor or something where it can get down inside there and just don't like, you know, submerge it. I mean, there are techniques if you got water damage where you can submerge these things and get the water displaced out of there. That, well, that's not what we're doing here. We're just trying to clean up flux. So you can see those became out a whole lot prettier. You want to go the extra mile. You can take your multimeter, set it on continuity. All right, and you can check between pins, make sure that you didn't get any bridging. Now we're going to have bridging between this because there's a trace running right there. Um, 
you know. And right here we got continuity, but I don't imagine that is probably supposed to have continuity. These two are going to probably have continuity, and these two are probably going to have continuity. Yep. But you're not going to have continuity across these. So, which, you know, these are so far apart there's no chance you're bridging anything. Unless you've just gone absolutely bat crap crazy with your solder. All right. Now, uh, if you want to talk about a few other things, we can talk about a few other things. I don't know what else can go wrong with these things other than it does have a processor in here. You know, you could have a bad processor. Um, there are a few of these surface mount resistors. That's a typical weak point on anything that I fix. So this little surface mount resistor right here could turn loose. Um, but then again, when I have one that's bad, usually I reflow everything just to make sure. And that never seems to fix them. So um, but on those 1% that you're not able to fix with just this, I don't have a good answer for that. All right. That's that. I'll show you how to seal it back up. Let's go over here. Back on this bench. Sealing them back up. Well, looks like I am out of this stuff. Going to have to order me some. And wait for that to come in because I can't see where I've got an extra tube. And this tube is just about toast. My bench needs cleaning. That is a good sign because that means we've been doing a lot of work. Anyway, normally all you do is, ah, it's all dry. What's left in here is all dried up. That's why I buy the little tubes because dry a big tube next thing you pick next time you pick that stuff up and it's going to just be dry and hard as a rock so you run yourself a bead of this stuff is water pump thermostat housing gasket maker around the edge you put your top back on on the models that have uh, the screws in the back you go ahead and screw the screws down and that will and, and put you some gloves on when you do this because that crap gets all over your hands and it's a pain in the ass to get off. Um, the ones that have the screws, you can use that to lock that that uh, this top in place. Okay, we don't have that with those, with this one. So what I'll use in that case is I'll get me some clamps which are out in the shop and I'm not going to make you wait but basically it's a big old clamp and you just clamp that sucker and clamp that sucker I use two of them that's all it takes it just and leave it sitting on there until your gasket maker has set up and you are good to go reinstall it in the vehicle and what is that New York saying Bob's your uncle or something like that all good to go anyhow appreciate you guys watching I uh, hope I was concise on this one and uh, my other uh, Kelsey Hayes module video was one of my top performers so um, and I didn't you know wasn't as experienced with them back then as I am now anyhow um, I'm certainly not as good <laughs> putting together videos not that I'm good today but uh, I've gotten a little bit better at it Nonetheless, I uh, appreciate you guys. Hit, get down there in the bottom and like and subscribe and do your thing. Hit the notification bell. We'll keep putting out some videos and uh, hopefully do you guys some uh, solids. Have a good one.